Our reading today comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, beginning at verse 39. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his offspring forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her home. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Why are you here on this video? What's your purpose? This is a question I hear a lot, and it can be a haunting question and a disarming question. But often, not always, but often when I pray, I sense the Lord asking me this question, Andy, what are you doing here? And it forces me to think about my role and my purpose. What am I doing here? Why am I doing this again? It's a question that prevents me from just going through the motions. It helps me re realign my sense of purpose and priorities. And it helps me consider new possibilities, things I hadn't considered. And it forces me to think a bit more critically and deeply and to live more intentionally on purpose. So and now I bring this question before you, before us together. What are we doing here? What are we doing as a church? Why are we here? Why is the Table Church here? Why is the Table Church in Victoria at the end of the year 2021 and on the verge of 2022? How would you answer this question? Would you say that we're here because life is hard and the table or the church is a safe and helpful place to work out life's difficulties with the help of others? Good answer, I hope that's true for many of us. Would you say that we're here because we're supposed to be the light of the world, like Jesus says on the Sermon on the Mount? Great answer. Maybe you say that you're here because the world is a broken place and we need a place to preserve and defend our beliefs against a society that's increasingly hostile to Christianity. Or maybe you'd say that you're here because this is the way you grew up. It's what you've known. What else are you gonna do? Maybe that's some of our answers. Or maybe some of us might not quite know how to answer. Maybe we're unsure what brings us here. Or maybe, maybe you feel there's an erosion of trust in God's word and God's work in the world. And the few of us who trust God need to stay together and keep the candles burning and look for what God might do next. Or maybe we've come here because church is now a weak and vulnerable minority in our world with limited influence and we've come to call upon God to do something. These answers are all fine. Maybe you've articulated your own in your head. But I want us to see Elizabeth and I want us to see Mary to see them and understand that they are models for us, they're images of what it means to be the church in the world today. Models even for being the table church in Victoria in 2022 and beyond. To help us understand why we're here 
and what we ought to be doing here to give us some grounding and direction. Elizabeth and Mary are our unlikely heroes for the same reason that there are obvious heroes, because they too lived in a time of eroding trust in God's word and God's work in the world. The story of God was much doubted in their day. The powerful exploited the vulnerable, rich got richer, the poor got poorer, and the glory days of God's blessing to Israel seemed to be far, far behind them. But Mary and Elizabeth were also counted among the weak and vulnerable. No one would think to look to them as holding the keys to Israel's future, much less the world's future. They were women in a patriarchal world without children. They're not in the spotlight. They did not hold any titles. They did not command anyone's attention. And yet, these two women in this story in Luke chapter 1 are at the center of the universe. They are located at the intersection of God and world in a way that no one else had ever been. They meet at Elizabeth's home in what is arguable, arguably the biggest moment in cosmic history according to the Bible. They meet at the advent of the God of all creation taking on flesh to dwell among men and women. God, literally in that moment, was taking on flesh within Mary's womb. And this is where we join the story that is told to us that we might see and understand why we're here and what our role is as the church in Victoria in the 21st century. But before we jump into this episode, it's important to note the time. When does this take place? We are in the sixth month, as Luke tells us, in verses 26 and 36, as prior to our episode. So we might ask, well, the sixth month of what? And the answer was that the timing is in relation to Elizabeth's pregnancy. Luke may as well said, if you're speaking in our day, at the end of the second trimester, after Elizabeth had been with child for six months, that's when Mary receives the news from the angel that she too will conceive and bear a son. She also hears the news that her relative Elizabeth is pregnant. This reorientation of time around the pregnancy of Elizabeth with John gives us indication that God is keeping time differently. On the verge of the new creation, the birth that will rework the entire creation into God's good kingdom, we start the clocks all over. In the sixth month. In the sixth month of what? No, just in the sixth month, we've started over. Time has started over in relation to this new work, this whole new creation. And so after Mary hears the news, she wastes no time. She gets up, she runs to the hill country to visit her relative Elizabeth. Probably a hundred miles from Nazareth, if Zechariah and Elizabeth live in Hebron, south of Jerusalem, as many think. That's a journey not taken on a whim. It's a journey taken with great purpose, excitement, and anticipation. And Mary bursts through the door, or so I picture it, and Elizabeth exclaims, what are you doing here, Mary? No, she doesn't. Elizabeth exclaims, blessing, blessing. Elizabeth blesses Mary. In blessing Mary, Elizabeth sees Mary and she names what is hidden. And this is given as a gift from God that fills Elizabeth with his Holy Spirit, his presence. Because she sees things that she would have no earthly way of knowing. And this is the way that Elizabeth is a model for us. For who we are and why we're here. We are also called to be filled with God's Holy Spirit so that we can bless one another. And to bless one another is to see and name Christ 
in one another. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Elizabeth sees and names what is hidden, which she otherwise wouldn't know. She sees Mary as God's servant. She sees the child in the womb who will be her Lord also. She also sees and names Mary's deep trust and faithfulness to the Lord. And this too is our work. It's a prophetic work. It's a seeing of what's true, even though hidden. And it's necessary work. We are here to see one another and to name one another in the context of blessing. Specifically to call out Christ in one another. To see Christ and name Christ being formed in one another. Just as he was being formed in Mary. To see Jesus at work, at work in each of us because we need to know God's presence and God's new creation in ourselves. And we need one another to call it out in us, to name it in us, and to bless it in us. What if we remembered that one of the reasons that we're here, one of the reasons we exist as the church, is to bless and to be blessed, to see one another and to be seen, not what's on the surface, but what is hidden, what's hidden inside of us, and to call it out of one another by naming it and blessing it, to remind one another regularly why we're here, what our purpose is as the church in the world, which leads us to our second model, Mary. Mary, who is physically, in this story, bearing Christ in her body. And this, too, is the image of our vocation, our calling, to bear Christ, to bear Christ in us, to bear Christ together and to bear Christ on mission in our homes, to bear Christ in our homes, to bear Christ in our neighborhoods, to bear Christ in our schools, to bear Christ in our offices, and our places of work. To bear Christ for the world, for the hope of the world, for the salvation of the world. Bearing Christ for the world is a function, outworking of believing the word of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word the end of the previous episode. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. That's why we're here, to hear a word from the Lord and to believe that it will be fulfilled concerning each one of us. That is our work. That's our vocation. That's our purpose. And then, bearing that word out into the world, taking it in to us, hidden in our hearts, and then bearing the word of God out in the world, or bearing Christ out in the world, for the world, like Mary. Because when we believe what is spoken to us from God, when we know God's presence and power and love because we hear and we take in his word of presence, I am with you always, of power, my arm is strong, it is not too short for you, and love for God so loved the world. When we take those into ourselves, even though they are hidden in us, we begin to act differently. We begin to see things differently, and we begin to talk differently. And we open up doors around us that were shut, both for ourselves and for those who are around us. 
we make haste to visit someone we otherwise might not visit. Or we speak words that reveal what is true, even if not always obvious. And we live with an anticipation of the inevitable. As a pregnant woman lives with the anticipation and the hope of the inevitable. That no matter how dark and cold and broken our surroundings, God's love and power are already present and will be birthed out into the world and will completely transform this weary, broken down old world. And everything will be new. And this is why we need to be like Elizabeth and encourage one another with blessing call it out in each one of us, seeing and naming the invisible Christ in our midst. And this is why we need to remember that we are like Mary, called to bear Christ in the world. It's only hope and peace. And to do it while singing a song of wonder like Mary does. Mary's song recounts the goodness and the justice of God. The God who sees the humble and lowly and lifts them up and pulls down the proud and the oppressor. Mary, who finds herself not in the spotlight of the masses, but in the center, nevertheless, in the center of God's own plans for the world, for the world's hope, for the world's renewal. She can't help but sing what she knows in her body to be true. And so we too are called to bear Christ for the world, singing a song of wonder and hope and joy as we go. Songs of truth and songs of reminding. So God, would you remind us of who we are and why we're here? Would you keep these two matriarchs, these two women, these two heroes before us, who believed your words, who believed there'd be a fulfillment of what was spoken of about them by you. Would you help us inhabit that story as well? To hide your words deep within us, that they might come to birth in the world around us, bringing your hope and your joy and your peace to this place, to this city and to this world. In Jesus' name.